8.35 p.m. on our clock of Earth's history. The planet's surface had been locked in ice for almost 25 million years. But at 8.37, a remarkable thing happened. The ice sheets started to recede. Something was warming the Earth. But it wasn't the sun. Believe it or not, the thing that would save the planet was actually inside the Earth itself, buried deep below the ice. This is Mount Augustine in the Aleutian Islands, one of the most volcanic regions on the planet. Augustine has been active for over 40,000 years, and it's still erupting today. Volcanologist John Power is here to study what it tells us about the end of Snowball Earth. Because volcanoes are the only things on the planet hot enough and strong enough to thaw a frozen world. We're on our way to Augustine Volcano. It's one of the most active volcanoes in the region. Last erupted in 2006. It all comes to play here at Augustine. A fiery hell lies under Mount Augustine's frozen surface. During its last eruption, millions of tons of lava and ash exploded into the atmosphere. So much material spewed out, the volcano actually grew. We're about 100 feet higher than the uh, summit of the volcano was prior to the eruption. This is some of the newest land in North America. Power uses a field thermometer to take a reading from just below the surface. We've got a temperature of about 95, 96 degrees centigrade. So the summit of the volcano is still, still very hot. If you wanted to cook some potatoes, fry up some eggs, this would be exactly the spot to do it. There's no doubt Mount Augustine is hot, but it's hard to believe a volcano, even one this powerful, could punch through an ice sheet several thousand metres thick. Where we are now has been covered with glacial ice as recently probably as 10, 15, 20,000 years ago. This was all underneath a glacier at that point in time. When Power examined volcanic rocks here, he found evidence that 24,000 years ago, an eruption smashed its way up through the ice. There is absolutely no problem for a volcano like Augustine or its neighbors to erupt through an ice sheet that could be either several kilometers or several miles thick. We know it's possible because we've seen it happen. In 1996, the Grimsvoten volcano in Iceland erupted right through a glacier. It punched its way up to the surface through a kilometer of ice. The torrents of hot gases and ash blew a giant hole in the glacier. It melted ice at a furious rate. Flash floods carrying 45,000 tonnes of water a second raged for hours. But on a global scale, that's nothing. When the whole world was frozen, a few little holes wouldn't have made much difference. Luckily, volcanoes have another formidable weapon in their arsenal. They spew out more than just lava and rocks. They also produce huge amounts of greenhouse gases. Carbon dioxide is one of the very dominant species of gas that is coming out of volcanoes. There have been times when we've had certainly, you know, thousands of tons per day coming out of this volcano. Mount Augustine is dwarfed by the volcanoes that broke through the ice of Snowball Earth. Scientists believe that thousands of them ejected billions of tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. 
Over a period of around a million years, this caused carbon dioxide levels to rise, reversing the depletion that created Snowball Earth and tipping the balance in the opposite direction. Carbon dioxide rapidly built up in the atmosphere until it got to a critical point where we had a super meltdown of the ice and that was the death knell of Snowball Earth. The carbon dioxide rich atmosphere trapped the sunlight, increased temperatures and finally melted the ice. After a 25 million year freeze, Snowball Earth was over. As the ice sheets retreated, something remarkable happened. The greatest leap in the evolution of life the world has ever seen. A leap that would lead directly to us. In the oceans, a few single-celled organisms had survived. After the ice melted away, they began to change dramatically. Roughly three million years after Snowball Earth ended, the new warm climate triggered an evolutionary explosion unlike any other. Single-celled bacteria evolved into multi-celled creatures. The first ever complex organisms and the ancestors of all animals, including us. It was the dawn of a new era for life on Earth. Snowball Earth must have been the closest thing to extinction of early life on Earth that we had. And yet we know creatures survived. And it can't be a coincidence that very soon after the waning stages of this Earth-wide ice age, we get the first large creatures. It really seems as though that series of environmental catastrophes spawned the kind of biology that could give rise to multicellularity. The key to this evolutionary revolution was oxygen. Before the deep freeze, oxygen levels were only 1%, too low to support more complex organisms. After the freeze, levels rocketed to 21%. Scientists suggest the boost in oxygen levels was the result of Ice Age chemistry. During Snowball Earth, the sun's ultraviolet rays reacted with water molecules in the ice to produce a chemical called hydrogen peroxide. When the ice eventually melted, the hydrogen peroxide broke down again, releasing huge quantities of oxygen into the air and oceans. The surge in oxygen levels provided the fuel for life to evolve from single to multi-celled organisms. They don't look like much. They're only the size of pinheads. But these tiny creatures are the oldest multicellular fossils on the planet. The first links in the evolutionary chain that eventually led to advanced animals and humans. In the new oxygen-rich atmosphere, these creatures became more and more complex, from just a few cells bound together, to creatures large enough for separate groups of cells to assume different body functions. Over millions of years, these specialized groups of cells evolved into the first organs, and that paved the way for ever larger and more complex anatomies. In Australia, Jim Galing studies the fossil remains of the creatures that inherited the planet after Snowball Earth. After Snowball Earth, we see a revolution in the history of life from the fossil record, because for the first time, we see large creatures, creatures that anyone can see with the naked eye. They are the first animals on Earth. This primitive sea creature is one of the first complex multicellular organisms. It lived and died around 50 million years after the end of Snowball Earth. 
it's absolutely complete. You can see the gut, you can see the head end where the segments wrapped around it and these incredibly fine segments just wrapped over the sea floor. All the animals on the planet, including us, are descended from creatures like this. You're looking at the first life forms which had patterns of cells and body plans that were the same as ours. Head, a tail, a belly, a back. Even though they're not necessarily our direct ancestors, these are the first creatures that represent the line of biology that gave rise to us. All over the planet, similar organisms were evolving making the leap from primitive to complex life. There'd been life on this planet for more than three billion years. And it was really only the snowball event that kick-started complex life. If it hadn't been for this ice age, this would have been slime world forever and we wouldn't be sitting here talking about it. So if you want to put your finger on one point in the history of life that made a big difference, that was Snowball Earth. From slime to this, complex life in all its vivid, colourful, infinite glory. All of this, you, me, every living thing on the planet, is here because of an evolutionary explosion 650 million years ago of a catastrophic deep freeze that threatened to wipe all life off the earth but ended up creating life as we know it. If it wasn't for Snowball Earth, we probably wouldn't be here.